Peace, Israel, and Yah bless. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. The title of this lesson is Passover 2020. <clears throat> Once again, this lesson is entitled Passover 2020. Once again, brace yourselves, tighten up your jaws, do not turn to the left or to the right, or you will get hit in the mouth. We are to walk the straight and the narrow way of the Most High's commandments. We are not to deviate to the left or to the right. Now, with this lesson passed over 2020, many people are unsure of exactly what to do during the time of Passover. Some people have no idea what Passover is. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to cover the Passover. Uh, and I'm going to do this lesson a bit differently than I have done the previous ones. Normally, I will go into the scrolls first, read the scrolls, and then I will give a commentary pertaining to that which was read later. This time, we will do it a bit differently. We're going to actually do it in reverse. I'm going to lay out some groundwork before I go into the scrolls. So I'm going to speak to you in regular English, and then I'm going to validate that which I have said or am about to say, I'm going to validate that with the scroll, with the scripture, the words of the Most High, as it was instructed to Moshe. All right, Passover, what is it? Passover, simply the Most High <clears throat> wanted to take his people, take his sons and daughters out of captivity in Egypt. <clears throat> now, for him to do this, he had to put many plagues on the Pharaoh and the Egyptians because they were holding his firstborn. <clears throat> Let me say that again. Because the Pharaoh, the Egyptians, had the firstborn of the Most High, his sons and daughters, the entire nation of Israel. They were held hostage by the Egyptians. So the Most High made an example of that Pharaoh by killing the firstborn man and beast in Egypt. By killing them during the Passover, the Most High sent an angel over the land of Egypt and killed the firstborn of man and beast. Everything in Egypt did not touch the house of Israel. And the reason why he did this is simple, because the Egyptians were holding his firstborn. So here you have a direct link and evidence of an eye for an eye. You're holding my firstborn, let him go. You don't let him go, I'm going to kill yours. Oh, you refuse to let him go? Okay, good. Here comes the death angel coming over your nation, killing the firstborn of man and beast, everything in your land. Make an example of that Pharaoh. So when anyone tells you that the son of the Most High is J.C., this is where the lie when the Romans slash Christians got a hold of our text, they took the stories and they simply changed them around. In other words, they added to them. So when you read about Easter and Christianity, these are lies. And I'm going to go into the scroll and show you where they have taken from Passover and created something that they call Christianity. Now, I want you to keep in mind, or, or Roman Catholicism, it's all the same thing. Keep in mind, truth is, there can be nothing created from it. There can be nothing added to it. Truth is, in its form, unchangeable. So, they have added all sorts of things. All of a sudden, now they're saying that we have uh, Easter. We're going to go through this scroll. You will not see the word Easter, not one place in here. You will not see anywhere where anyone named J.C. died for the sins of Israel or died for the sins of the whole earth. You will not see that here. Now, yesterday was Friday. Today is Sabbath day to Sabbath day, Saturday. Yesterday they called that Good Friday. Now, if you look at Leviticus chapter 23 and Deuteronomy chapter 16, if you read those chapters as it addresses the Most High's holy days and feast days, you will never find anything called Lent. You will never find any feast day called Palm Sunday. 
or Good Friday or any feast day or holy day called Easter or Christmas. These things don't exist. These are manifestations of the evil hearts of Romans slash Christians who are idolaters and enemies unto you and enemies unto the Most High and His people. So I'm going to take you on this lesson to show you exactly where these lies came from and that you may be able to better discern that which you have heard, that which you're able to see, and what you're able to read. So they're telling us that J.C. died, fried sins, raised up in three days. You won't find any of that in Exodus chapter 12. We know good and well that they state clearly that uh, Easter is celebrated on April the 14th. Now, the month of April is translated into the ancient days and the ancient months that we were commanded. The month of Abib translates to April of today. Now, the month of Abib is the beginning of months unto the children of Israel as commanded by the Most High to Moshe. That the month of Abib was supposed to be the beginning of our months. It's the first month of our year. So the Christians have changed it, and now they're telling us that the beginning of the month is something called January in the dead of winter. <clears throat> and anyone with any sense knows good and well that, you know, it makes sense for the beginning of the year to be when everything comes alive, the springtime, versus the dead of winter. Now, as it pertains to this whole JC concept, they're saying that Easter is, is he rose up on this day on the 14th. Now, if you go into the Most High's law and see what happened during the month of Abib on the 14th, you will read clearly that it is Passover. It is not Easter. There is no such thing as a holy day called Easter by which anyone ever died for anyone. Never happened. <clears throat> Never ever happened. Does not exist. So they've stolen a story from Exodus chapter 12 and created this Easter using the same exact date as when the Most High did the Passover in Egypt. And so we have children of Israel running around talking about I'm saved by the blood of the Lamb. And apparently the Lamb is J.C. So let's look at this thing. J.C. is the Lamb. J.C. is Melchizedek. What else? Uh, J.C. is Emmanuel. J.C. is Yoshua. J.C. is the J.C. is everything. You just name anything, and and J.C. fits that bill. <laughs> and our people are actually believing this thing because it's what they've been taught, and too many of them are intellectually lazy and will not go into this book and read it, and are fearful of letting go of lies and things that are falsehood for the simple fact that they feel as if they were to let go of that, they may lose their wives, their children, and their family, and their status within their community. And nothing could be further from the truth. Because once you take a hold of the Most High's righteousness, then he begins to strengthen you in truth and in righteousness. So there is no benefit at all in taking a hold of falsehood, of vanity. It will bring about your and our destruction. So, we're going to go into Exodus chapter 12, and we're going to establish clearly that it was the children of Egypt and the cattle in Egypt, everything man and beast, is what was ransomed for the sons and daughters of the Most High. What was killed was the firstborn of the Egyptians and their cattle, and no person named J.C. died nowhere in Exodus chapter 12. No prophet ever mentioned no one by that name. Never happened. In fact, the Most High made it plain that no one could ever die for the sins of anyone. Everyone dies for his own sins. If you're reading this law, you know this. So, without further ado, ado let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and address the Passover 2020. Dealing with when the Most High sent his angel over Egypt and killed the firstborn man and beast of the Egyptians because the Egyptians and the Pharaoh was holding the Most High's son and firstborn 
who are the children of Israel, the nation as a whole. I don't care if you have a thousand children and 500 twins came out of that. Someone came out first. J.C. can't be the firstborn of the Most High when the Most High said clearly that his firstborn and his son is Israel, the nation. No one trumps the words of the Most High. The Most High doesn't change and the Most High doesn't lie. So this is where we have to make a decision. Are we going to go with what the Most High said who his son is and who his firstborn is? Or are you going to listen to Paul, Peter, Tom, Harry, Johnny, Willie, and Louie in the back? These Europeans. And you should know this by now. These are wrongs. Enemies unto you, enemies unto me, enemies unto the Most High and his people. All right. Now, let's begin the lesson. Dealing with Passover. We are in Exodus chapter 12. And verse 1 of Exodus chapter 12 reads, And Yah spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. What month? The month of Abib. The beginning of months means the beginning of the year. That's the month of April. So if you believe that January is the beginning of the month, you're believing and following contrary to what we were instructed by the Most High. Okay, so the Most High clearly states, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. That's the month of Abib. That's April. Now, while I'm there, at the first of the month, okay, the first of the month of Bib, the heathen has made a mockery of the Most High. Uh, April Fools. This is the beginning of months unto us. And on the first day, this is what the heathen has come up with to make a mockery and counter the Most High. And the foolish children of Israel are running around on the first day of April repeating this garbage because they have not read this book. Once again, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year unto you. That's the month of Bib. It's springtime. I'm looking, I'm looking out my window right now. Everything is blooming. Uh, the pollen is falling, which is beating me up. Uh, and the leaves are on the trees and everything is coming alive, which makes perfect sense to anyone that can see this. Verse 3. Speak ye also. Now speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel. Speak ye unto the family of Israel, that bloodline, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. So, on the tenth day, okay, on the tenth day, which was yesterday, we would have taken a lamb out. Normally, all the lamb would be hanging out in a big pen. But the one that you're going to pick for the Passover lamb, who's supposed to be a lamb unblemished of the first year, you separate him from the rest of the herd. We are to do that on the 10th day of the first month. We're to separate him from everyone. Separate that, that one Passover lamb. Okay? We're to separate him from the rest of the herd. Put him in a different pen all by himself because he is going to be uh, the Passover lamb. All right, verse 4. And if the household be too little for the lamb, then let him and his neighbor next unto his house Take it according to the number of the souls, souls of bodies, persons. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the lamb. So, my house, myself and my wife lives here. So, when we hear neighbors, you have to understand there's a mix-up to where when we hear, uh, you know, Show love to your neighbor, do this to your neighbor and that. People keep thinking that these are strangers. Keep in mind, when the land was laid out and the way marks were instructed, the borders, one tribe lived alongside another. And another tribe was bordered against the next and bordered up against the next. So when we speak of our neighbors, if we're speaking of the man whose house is directly next to me, he would be an Israelite. He is my brother. We are brothers by bloodline because we have the same father. If we're speaking of the man that's in a border in the country next to us, he is also our brother because all the Israelite tribes bordered each other. So when we hear neighbor, some people seem to think that we're talking about Philistines and Egyptians. We're not. Okay, and we're not talking about people of a different bloodline. We're not speaking of a different nation when you're hearing this. Okay, so... When we're speaking of the household, if two people live in my house 
and there's only one person or two people living next to the, the other house, we wouldn't waste by killing two different lambs for four people to eat. What we would do is I'll speak to my neighbor who happens to be my brother next door, bloodline. I will speak to him So look, I've already got the Passover uh, lamb ready. I'm pulling him out. He's in the pan. We're going to do this Passover thing in a few days. And what will happen is, is that those two houses or those three houses would get together to eat that one lamb. That way you don't have three people cooking a whole lamb, which would be an entire waste of meat. Hope that makes sense to you. Verse 5. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. So, without blemish, meaning it should not be sick. It should not be injured. It should not be crippled in any way. It should not be blind. It should be without blemish. In other words, it should be perfect. It should be a male of the first year. And these are specific commandments. Okay? It may be of the sheep. It also may be of the goats. Verse 6. And ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. All right. So we pull it out. We take that goat or that lamb. We take him out on the 10th day. We put him up. He's in a separate pan. Until the 14th day, until the time of Passover, then the congregation will kill that lamb or that goat. All right. And we kill that in the evening as the sun gets ready to go down. Okay. Verse 7. And they shall take the blood and strike it on the two side post and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. So wh wherever it is that we're going to eat the house, we're going to eat the, uh, the lamb or the goat, whichever house that we decide to eat that animal in, we're going to take the blood and we're going to put it at the top of the post, left side and right side. And the reason why we're doing that is to ensure that when the Most High sends this angel through, that he is going to, the angel will see that blood Understand there are Israelites in that house that's adhering to instruction and they won't get themselves killed. It's really that simple. Excuse me. Now, while I'm there, I heard, before I go to verse 8, I have heard someone saying, uh, you know, Passover, there's no such thing of putting no blood on the doorpost. Don't you think God is going to know? Uh who did and who didn't do it. You don't have to put blood on the doorpost. It's God. He already knows. This is just an example of our people finding any occasion to just disregard instruction. Just, just to disregard it. This coming up with all manner of foolishness to justify ignorance. That's one. And rebellion. That's two. Verse eight. And they shall eat the flesh in that night. Roast with fire and unleavened bread. And with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. That is verse 8. Now, so we are instructed exactly what specific animal that we can use. Be a sheep, maybe a goat. We're instructed exactly in what condition that animal is supposed to be in. It's not supposed to be three years old, four, five, or six years old. It's supposed to be of the first year. It's supposed to be perfect as far as health goes. No injuries. Shouldn't be lame, shouldn't be sick, shouldn't be blind. It should be without blemish. These are instructions that we are to go by as it pertains to this specific feast day. It is to be eaten with bitter herbs. That's it. It is to be cooked, roasted with fire. It's not to be barbecue sauce can't be poured on it. You can't cook it in a stew fashion. You can't cook this how you want this is to be cooked in a specific manner. Verse 9. Eat not of it raw. We're not to eat any, any raw meat at all. Nor sodden at all with water. It's not to be cooked in a stewed fashion. But roast with fire. His head with his legs. And with the pertinence thereof. Alright. That's heart, lungs, and things like that still in it. Here's what we have to understand it because as it pertains to eating and ro roasting this, this lamb. A concern that many of our people have. Okay, <clears throat> I need to go buy some lamb for Passover. I'm going to tell you exactly what I do. Number one, this lamb 
we're supposed to actually be practicing while in the lands of our captivity, which means we are to observe these days. They are not to go unobserved by us. We are to pay attention to them. We are to keep them. So, when I keep Passover, for those of you who haven't done it, let me go ahead and make this clear right now. We have a few days until Passover. You are to take all the leaven out of your house. Leaven is bacon, sold and yeast. Anything that causes bread to rise should be out of your house. And we've already gone through and thrown out a whole lot of it. There's a few other items left that within the next few hours, we're going to get rid of that thing. Okay, within the next 24 hours, my house should be clear of the leaven. We're going to throw everything out. Now, some people may take that leaven product and go put it in the storage or someplace other than where they live. I simply throw it out. But the stipulation, what we were instructed, is to make sure there's no leaven in your dwelling places. That's where you live. So if you took it and put it in the storage, I don't see a problem with that. It, the storage is not where you live. The goal is that it should not be found in your dwelling places where you live. Now, some people can go to the extreme and say, well, you know, this you, you dwell in the city. You, you, you're a member of this city. So you, you can stress this all kind of ways. The goal is don't have it in your house. Really that simple. As it pertains to me and my house, I simply have like a red ribbon that I cut in three pieces and I take some tape. Uh, the evening before Passover begins, I put the tape at the top and the two sides of the doorpost, and that's what I do. Do I eat lamb? No. And I'll tell you why. I do, however, uh, for seven days, leaven is out of my house, and for seven days, I'm eating unleavened bread. Okay, we eat a piece of unleavened bread each and every day to commemorate the Passover. Now, as for the lamb goes, in my house, we do not eat any lamb here uh, on Passover for the simple fact that if I went to Bilo, Food Lion, Walmart, or any one of these grocery places and bought a piece of lamb, what I cannot do, I cannot without doubt know for a surety that these guidelines are met. Number one, you've got to roast it with fire. That's a specific instruction on how it's to be eaten, how it's to be cooked, excuse me. It has to be of the first year. If you went to your local grocery store and bought you a piece of lamb, you don't know if that lamb is 10 years old or 3 years old. <clears throat> you don't know if it was sick before it was slaughtered. You don't know if it was lame or crippled. So when we to do this law, when we are to commemorate it, <clears throat> we've got to be specific in how we're to do these things. And though we are in captivity and we are to commemorate these things, I don't see, this is me personally, I don't see how eating a lamb that's contrary to everything here, you have no idea where it's from. It was not pulled out. It was not separated on the 10th day from the rest of its herd. You don't know if it's healthy or wasn't healthy. You have no idea of these things. You don't know if it was a male or a female, and you have absolutely no idea how old it was. All of those things are contrary to what we were instructed right here. And that's why I don't do it, because I cannot for sure say that any of these things were in place. So I don't do it. And there's some people that do, and if that's what you do, then that's fine. But I'm stating simply that these are clear-cut instructions. And since we cannot verify that these things are in place, I don't do it. Just so you know. Verse 10. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remained of it until the morning, ye shall burn with fire. Once we eat of the Passover meal, of the Passover lamb, anything that remaineth until the morning, we're to burn it. Okay? It's to be burned with fire. It is not to be eaten. Verse 11. And thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste. In haste is a hurry. It is Yah's Passover. That's verse 11. Now, many of the camps, they will have Passover parties. Running out ballrooms at hotels. Israelites dressed up in their finest linen. 
$1,500 a plate, and whatever else they've got going on. Money hustles. Money hustles. Sitting down, laughing, joking, and smoking. Now, I do understand that the Most High is killing during this Passover. There's chaos during this Passover. <clears throat> We're going to be thrust out of Egypt in a hurry during this Passover. We don't have the luxury of sitting down, eating, laughing, and joking, having a good time, and, and yucking it up. That's not what's happening here. And so we have Israelite camps that are fleecing our people, our people who have not taken the time to go, on into, this, to go into this word and decipher it, and they feel they can go to a Passover party, sit down, eat lamb, that they don't know exactly if it was a male, female, whether it was sick or not, how old it was, and none of that. They're not adhering to the instructions that we were given. Okay? Verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and all the gods, idols of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am Yah. All right. This is the part where we flip. I want you to move over a few chapters. Move back. <clears throat> Let's move to Exodus chapter 4. Move back. Still keep your hands on the Passover at uh, Exodus chapter 12. Now, let's move over to Exodus chapter 4, and we will read verse 22. And verse 22 of Exodus chapter 4 reads, And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, this is the Most High, speaking to Moses, for him to go tell Pharaoh a specific message. Let's hear what that message is. We are at Exodus chapter 4, verse 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith Yah. So we know exactly who's talking. Israel is my son, not JC. Let me read that again. Israel, the nation of people, the bloodline, is my son, even my firstborn. Verse 23. And I say unto thee, let my son Israel go, that he may serve me. We are the most high's servants. And if thou refuse to let him go, that's him the entire nation. Behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. So I came here to let you see exactly why Exodus chapter 12 has taken place. Because the Most High had forewarned the Pharaoh by way of Moshe to let his son Israel go. And the Most High stated clearly that if you refuse to let my firstborn go, I'm going to kill yours. And that's why we've got Passover. And so you clearly understand without a shadow of a doubt that Passover has nothing to do with Easter. It's a lie. It's a made-up story stolen from the context of what we're reading here in past in, uh, in Exodus chapter 12 discussing this Passover. No such thing as no J.C. dying on the cross. The Most High said his son is Israel. Who are you listening to? <clears throat> are you going to listen to the Most High or are you going to listen to Paul and Peter and Willie and Tommy and Louie in the back? This is where you have to make your discernment. And make your choice on exactly whom you will follow. Alright. So we see clearly where the Most High said he would pass over and execute judgment. Okay. Verse 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. When you see death and destruction. When you see plagues, it's the most high at work. Excuse me. And we are to remember that. Okay? So, by the blood of the lamb on the doorpost, those people in the houses were saved. When we take a lamb 
to the most high's temple from whatever city in which we dwell. And we took that lamb, that ram, that goat, or any of our sin offerings. And that Levite, that priest, kills that animal and sprinkles that blood. It's the blood of the animal that atones for us. Hope you understand that. That is why we were instructed specifically that we were not to eat any manner of blood or fat. Because the fat is put on the altar to burn. And the blood is the life of the animal. And the blood of that animal is what atones for the children of Israel. So they have taken that context of us being saved by the blood of the lamb by way of the most high sacrifice upon his altar at his temple. And all of a sudden now the lamb is JC. And we're saved by the blood of JC. No such thing. This is stolen from the very context of what the Most High has ordered. To where when we put up a sin offering, we bring that lamb, that ram up to the temple. That priest will then sacrifice that animal on our behalf. And the blood of that animal atones for our sins by way of the Levite. And that is how the Most High forgives our trespass. They changed that story now, and all of a sudden, J.C.'s blood, he's the blood of the Lamb now, so they say, when the Most High has never, and I do repeat, never, ever commanded that we ever sacrifice a human on his altar. Never happened, or anywhere else. All right, verse 14. And this they shall be unto you for a memorial. We're to memorialize this, even though we are in captivity. And ye shall keep it a feast to Yah. Throughout your generations, you shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. That means it does not change. We are to keep Passover. So if you are a Christian now coming into the Most High's Word, there is no such thing called Easter. You cannot find it in here in the Most High's holy days. And by the way, the Christians, they keep, and the heathen, the heathen, keeps holidays, H-O-L-I. D-A-Y-S. You can't find a holiday in this book. No place in the Most High's law, statutes, judgments, precepts, his feast days, or his holy days. The Most High has holy, H-O-L-Y days. Most High does not have H-O-L-I days. And you cannot look anywhere in any of the Most High's holy days or his feast days and find anything called Lent can't find anything called Easter, and you can't find anything called Christmas. Does not exist. These are ways of the Romans. These are lies. Verse 15. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. All leaven is to be out of your house by the time that Passover starts. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. It's for his son. You're going to be cut off. That could be banishment. That could be a whole lot of things. Okay? So, to the man of Israel that's going to walk in the Most High's Law, Statutes, Judgments, and Precepts, and that's going to keep this holy day, going to keep this feast day, going to memorialize this day, all leaven is to be out of your house. Don't make a mistake and eat a sandwich during that week. Don't eat a piece of bread during that week on accident. That's not an unleavened bread. So you're to abstain from eating anything that has leaven in it for one week. For one week. And you're not to make an error and go order sandwiches Subway or something crazy like that. Verse 16. And in the first day, there shall be a holy convocation. And in the seventh day, there shall be a holy convocation to you. <clears throat> no manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only must be done of you. In other words, the first day, the 14th day and the 21st day, no work for you. Those days at my job, I've already put in for those days. We're going to be off anyway. We have an extended furlough. So, you know, won't be going back to work for quite some time. But I had already put in vacation for those days. 
Because holy days, I'm not working. Sabbath days, I'm not working. I will not go against the Most High's law, statutes, judgments, precepts. Verse 17. And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For in this selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. We are to observe this day forever throughout our generations. The Most High is stating clearly that he brought us out of Egypt. Okay, now, let's keep in mind that knowledge gives wisdom. Wisdom is the application of that which is learned. Once you learn a thing, then your thinking changes. Now, you maneuver different based on what you've been taught or what you know or what you've learned. So, Here's where I want you to kind of apply some of the wisdom and the light that the Most High have allowed you to see as it pertains to these lies told by the Romans, told by the Christians. Okay, if they're going to tell you that J.C. died on the 14th or he was raised up on the 14th of this day, they're trying to replace Passover with this Easter lie, <clears throat> and then J.C. is also God, <clears throat> right? And J.C. is a trinity with God. Then how come you dying and bringing people out on the same day? How you doing all of that at once? <clears throat> Let me read verse 17. Ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For in this self same day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore, shall ye observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. So, okay, let me see here. J.C. is, he is bringing us out of Egypt while he's dying at the same time. He's being strung up on the cross on the 14th. He's dying and bringing us out at the same, at the same time. Really? So, this is the things that once the Most High decide to pour out his spirit upon us and we decide to seek him with our whole heart and our whole soul, we can go in this Torah and take that New Testament and shred that thing. All right? Verse 18. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month at evening, when it gets dark, ye shall eat unleavened bread until the 1 and 20th, 20th day of the same month at evening. So we start on the evening of the 13th. Okay? Passover starts, and then it goes all the way until the 21st day of the month. Okay? So we're, they're going to run soon as Passover. The first day of Passover is over from the 13th to the 14th. On the evening of the 14th, begin the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Okay, they run pretty much concurrent except for the first day. All right. Verse 19. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. All the leaven start getting it out of your house. Make sure you don't miss nothing. Okay. <clears throat> for whosoever eat it, eat it leaven or eat it that which is leavened, even that soul should be cut off from the congregation of Israel. That's the family of Israel. Whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Hmm. That's interesting when you look at the latter part of that verse. Because if you let these Christians tell it, and if you let these Hebrew Israelites who are teaching black JC tell it, it's nothing but Christianity twisted up to where, hey, we're all the same. And, you know, there's no such thing as Israel being a bloodline. It's all what you believe. Everyone is Israel. We're all spiritual Israel and all that other madness. If we're all the same, and we're not, most High made it plain that we're not. And if there's no distinction between the stranger and an Israelite, and there clearly is, then why is this statement here? It states clearly, seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. Leaven should be out of your house. That's anything that causes bread to rise. Bacon, soda, and yeast are two examples of that. For whosoever eat, eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel. So you're going to get cut off whether you are an Israelite by birth or you are a stranger that dwells in the midst of the children of Israel. Whether he be a stranger, meaning we ain't blood related to him, or born in the land, meaning Israelite by birth by blood, direct genealogy to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Verse 20. 
You shall eat nothing leavened. In all your habitation shall ye eat unleavened bread. So, for those seven days, you're to buy unleavened bread. Now, I'll tell you this. I don't know how to make any flat breads like from scratch. I wish I did, and I may need to look into that so I could make some. Because there's some bread we, we normally buy every year uh, at the store. And this thing, the, the, the taste of that thing is, is whew. I mean, you have to have something to drink with that. It's, it's, it's not pleasant. Put it to you like that, okay? Uh, so I wish I knew how to make some flat breads using some flour to make me like a flat bread that I can really enjoy. Uh, but uh, the ones that we do buy, it's kind of like a, almost like a cracker looking thing. Uh, and it doesn't taste good. It'll choke you to death, really. You have to drink some water or have something to drink with it because it's just not pleasing to eat. Uh, so I have to learn how to make some flatbreads. Anyway, Mosiah states here clearly at verse 20, you shall eat nothing leaven in all your habitations, shall ye eat unleavened bread. So every day we're to at least eat a piece of leavened bread, of unleavened bread, excuse me, to kind of commemorate uh, Passover as, uh, as well as a feast of unleavened bread specifically. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. So all the many different families, they all have a lamb, right? In the whole nation, everyone's got a lamb, you know, uh, and they're actually going to, and Moses give the commandment, hey, won't you all prepare, get ready to kill your Passover and, and get ready, uh, we're getting ready to start the Passover. So all the different families in all the many different places would actually would draw up their animal and go ahead and get rid of slaughter it and get rid of cooking. And ye shall take a bunch of high salt and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until the morning. So once we do this thing, we kill the Passover and we get ready to roast this thing with fire. We put that blood on the, on the doorpost. At that point, no one leaves the house. Okay? Verse 23. For Yah will pass through and will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, Yah will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. So once that angel passes over the land, sees the blood on the two lintels and the, and, and the top top of the doorpost, he knows good and well there are Israelites in there that's adhering to the instruction given. Don't kill anyone in that house. Do not kill the firstborn in that house. There are Israelites down, down in that house that's uh, adhering to order. Okay? So, so you understand that. Verse 24. And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. We are to teach our children this. We are not to teach our children some European man died for you and your sins and went up to heaven to make some place for you. No. No. Not so. Lie. Verse 25. And it shall come to pass when you become to the land which Yah will give you according as he has promised, then you shall keep this service. So, when we get to the land, we are to observe the Passover. We are to do it. Now keep in mind, this first Passover that we did was done in Egypt. Because we were still under the hand of the Egyptians at the time. Okay? So we have kept Passover outside of the land. We're reading that. Because we have not yet gone into the land of Canaan. And that is the land that the Most High prepared for us. The Most High has not prepared a place for you me or anyone else in the sky. The land that he prepared for the children of Israel, the land that he prepared for his son, the land that he prepared for his firstborn, the nation of Israel, that land is known as the land of Canaan. To be clear. Verse 26. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, what mean ye by this service? So your children are going to say, and if you have small children, and you're doing Passover, and you're observing it, your children are going to want to know why you're doing this. And they're going to want to know because their friends are going to ask them, 
why you can't come out of the house on Saturdays? Because your house is keeping the Sabbath day. Well, we don't do that. So your children is going to face all types of peer pressure from their peers because their peers, their parents won't follow any of this law. So your child is going to seem as though they are strange and so will you. But keep in mind that the children of Israel, we are a peculiar people unto the Most High, which means we're altogether different from everyone else. And our laws and our customs are altogether different from everyone else. So somehow we don't want to have that peculiarity anymore. We want to be like everyone else. And that has been the cause of our strife. So you are to teach your children this Passover and explain to them why this lie came about with this Easter. That way they can understand it. And don't you think they can't understand it? These children are smarter than you think. And I'll say this again. That which I know now, I could have known all that I know now by the time I was 15 years old. If I only had someone around me who was able to see and understand this. But it was not their time to see and understand it. And it was not their time to know it. Nor was it my time to know it. But my time is now. And all that I have learned, it is my duty that I share it with you and anyone else that are, that is willing to listen. Okay? All right. Uh, verse 26, once again, it says, It shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? Verse 27. Then ye shall say, It is the sacrifice of Yah's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt, when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses... And the people bowed the head and worshipped. So your children are going to ask you, what mean ye? What is the meaning of this celebration? What's the meaning of this commemoration? What's the meaning of this memorial? And then you tell the child, you say, we were in Egypt as, as slaves at one point, And we are the firstborn of the Most High. We are his sons and his daughters. And since we were enslaved in Egypt, the Most High redeemed his firstborn, re redeemed his children by killing the children of the Egyptians, killing their firstborn. And that is the meaning of why we're doing what we're doing. <clears throat> and you make sure you tell them also, the Christians then took the story, switched it around, stole it, made up a lie, talking about using the same date as Passover, talking about J.C. is the son of God, which flies in the face of what God himself said. And this is why they do Easter. But we don't do Easter because we are these people right here. You teach your child that, I guarantee you they will understand it. Okay? But teach it to them. Tell it to them. Take them in this book. Have them read it. And we will be returned back to the way things were at the first at the first, we were the sons and daughters of the living God. And so will we be at the end. None of this is changing. We're going back to this whether we want to or not. The ones that don't want to, the Most High is going to kill them. It's really that simple. Okay? So we understand clearly why we have Passover. It's the Most High sending his angel over, making a sacrifice. It is the sacrifice of Yah's Passover who passed over the houses of the children of of Israel in Egypt when he smoked the Egyptians and delivered our houses and the people bowed and worshiped because they understood clearly why this was done. Verse 28 and the children of Israel went away and did as Yah had commanded Moses and Aaron and Aaron so did they. <clears throat> so we were given instruction by Moshe and Aaron and when that instruction was given we obeyed. Verse 29 and it came to pass that at midnight that Yah smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Kill them. <clears throat> From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle. Now, the next question is, well, why would the Most High kill the firstborn of all the Egyptians from the Pharaoh's son? Every man in Egypt and woman in Egypt that was a firstborn, he killed them. And then he killed all the cattle. 
Why would the Most High do this? Let's get a reminder. Let's go on back one more time. Some people need reminders. <clears throat> so I'm going to remind you. Exodus chapter 4, verse 22. We're going back there again to remind you. And Exodus chapter 4, verse 22 reads, And thus thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith Yah, most high speaking, not Peter speaking, not Paul speaking, not Andrew speaking, or any of these Europeans. Thus saith Yah, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. That's Israel the nation. Verse 23, and I say unto thee, let my son Israel go, that he, Israel, may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him who is Israel, my firstborn and my son go, behold, warning, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. Now let's go back to Exodus chapter 12. So we see clearly and understand clearly why the Most High killed the firstborn of everyone, man and beast, in, in, it, in Egypt. From the firstborn that sat on Pharaoh's throne to the man down into the dungeon and to the cow. Once again, eye for an eye, tooth for tooth. You got my son, you don't let him go, I'm going to kill your son. How you like that? So you see how the Most High operates. All right, this turn the other cheek, lay down and play passive. We have never done this in the days of old. And the more we turn to this Lord, the Most High is going to strengthen our spirit. He's going to take this spirit of cowardice from our men <laughs> and this spirit of fear. And we will stand brave as lions in this law. It's coming. All right, verse 30. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants. And all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in the land. Can you imagine that horror scene? For there was not a house where there was not one dead. Wasn't a house in Egypt where there wasn't a stiff someplace. So, the Most High killed these Egyptians, and the Egyptians was used as a ransom for us. So the only people died for us, died on our behalf, was Egyptians. It was not J.C. So J.C. is the lamb. J.C. Melchizedek. J.C. Joshua, the son of Nun. J.C. the son of God. J.C. is everything. And not only that, J.C. is the Egyptians here, here too. Because we see clearly it's the Egyptians that died for us. We see that clearly. We see clearly it was the Egyptians that was ransomed for us. So now, J.C. takes the place of the Egyptians too. J.C. is everything. He's everything. I mean, you can't... And that's where the story falls apart because they're trying to put this idol in everything and, and no matter where they put it, the Most High destroys this lie. Okay? Verse 31. And he called for Moshe and Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go. Serve Yah as ye have said. So Pharaoh rose up. People are crying, hollering and screaming. His servants waking them up, crying, hollering. These Israelites, their God has killed our children. We need you to do something. So Pharaoh rose up in a haste, confused, and no doubt scared. Summons Moshe and Aaron. Get those two up here. Look. Get these Israelites, get your people, go serve your God, because he didn't kill everyone over here. And so the fear has kicked in. Now the Pharaoh knows, and the children of Israel knows, and those of Egypt remaining knows, the God of Israel is the God of the whole earth. So now Israel's scared because of what they're seeing, and the Egyptians scared because of what they're seeing. So the Most High made an example of that Pharaoh. But the Most High raised up that Pharaoh for that purpose. Rose him up to destroy him. So you understand that? Now, verse 32. This is the Pharaoh talking. Also, 
Take your flocks and your herds, as ye have said, and be gone and bless me also. Look, take everything. But put a blessing in for me because uh, things are pretty bad in Egypt right now. The place is destroyed. My people may turn against me. I've lost my firstborn, my son. Everyone else has, has died. The crops are ruined. We're in disarray. We're in ruination. Say a prayer for me. Go ahead and go uh, serve your God in the wilderness. Take your flocks, take your herd, whatever it is you need. Just go because we no longer want these plagues upon us. That's the position of the Pharaoh at this point. <clears throat> All right. Verse 33. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste, for they said we'd be all dead men. So the Egyptians are like, look, get them out of here. Whatever you hear, here's my gold, here's my necklace, here's the rings, grab these rubies. Whatever it is you need, take it and go. Because they are fearful, so they were urging, they're thrusting them out. Get up out of here, okay, because you are the cause of our plight. Because of you, the Most High has brought these plagues upon us, has caused my firstborn to be killed has caused these famines upon the land, has brought these plagues upon the land. So the further I can separate myself from you, I might be able to save myself if I just let you go and get up out of here with whatever it is you want, just leave. And that is the standpoint of the Egyptians at that point. They were urgent upon us, kicking us out. Get away from here, get away from me, just leave. You have brought about our destruction. That's what the Egyptians, that's that's how they're thinking at this point. At this point okay? We be all dead men. So they realize clearly, man, if we don't get these people out of here, if we don't release these people and send them to go serve their God, their God's going to kill all of us. And guess what? That's going to happen just like that. Instead of just one nation, it's going to happen to all the earth. Okay, they're all going to have to grab the children of Israel and take us back to exactly where they got us from. That's coming. Now, and while they're doing that, they're going to apologize to the Most High and they're going to get our gold and our, our silver, all these vaults that they have all this, these, uh, these precious metals in. They're going to bring that with us in tow because it belongs to us. So all these vaults these nations have with all this gold that they're stockpiling and this silver, all they're doing is keeping this stuff in safekeeping for us because the righteous is going to get it. Yes, they're going to get it. They're going to have to take us up to the most highest temple with all that gold and silver in tow and apologize and drop it off. That's how that's going to go. Now, verse 34. And the people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading thralls being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver, jewels of gold, and raiment. So they borrowed, hey, let me, let me hold them down the rings you got. Nice necklace. Let me get that figure roll. Let me get that. Uh, shirt and pants. Got that too. Okay, now, you know, we couldn't wear no mixed linen now. So, yeah, I like that robe you got, but is it 100% cotton? Because I can't, I can't rock that 50-50 or that 60-40. You understand? So, we got that raiment. Let me get that clothes you've got. That necklace. Those nice earrings you have. So, as soon as we got it, we were out. And they were willing to give it up because they understood their lives were at stake. Verse 36. And Yah gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent unto them such things as they required. And they spoiled the Egyptians. We jacked them. Let's borrow this. Let's borrow that. We knew good and well there was no borrow. We won't be seeing you again. So let's get that and that and that too. Because you about to get destroyed. And uh, give it up. All right. So that's exactly how that went. So we spoiled them. We jacked them. <clears throat> we robbed them, literally. Okay. Verse 37. But that's because they robbed us. Righteous judgment. Oh, you understand? And we have to be willing to enforce the Most High's righteous judgment. Verse 37. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Sukkoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men besides children. All right. Whole lot of people. All right. Now, when you start reading that and you start going into numbers in these different books, there's a lie about 144,000 being chosen and all of that. You could find 144 Israelites in just one tribe. So 
Don't believe that 144,000 New Testament madness. That's madness. <laughs> the Most High said we will, we will be the sand of the sea. Now, how is the sand of the sea equal to 144,000? So don't buy into that madness. It's madness. Now, verse 38. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herds, even very much cattle. A mixed multitude. What does that mean? People who are not of the bloodline of the children of Israel. Strangers. I'm certain some Egyptian in there said, hey, man, I see what's going down. I'm going to join you. I'm not trying to get killed. I realize clearly that the most high is with you. You're the most high's people. I'm not siding with these Egyptians, though I am an Egyptian. I'm, I'm down with the house of Israel. I'm going to go with the house of Israel. I'm going to cleave unto the most high and his people and thus save myself and my household. It's amazing what a man will do when his life is on the line. Or the life of his family. So all these big tough. Evil people in this these lands. We call them racist. But they're not racist. They're evil. They're wicked. Alright. Like I've said before. You can't charge a man with race. You will not see a man being charged with racism. Anywhere in this book. But what you will find. You will find a man charged with hatred. You will find a man charged with wickedness. With evil and walking contrary to the Most High's law. And that's what the racist does. <laughs> you understand? So it's going to be made clear. All these big old tough I hate you and wish you were dead in this and that. You'll be surprised and you will be surprised when their lives are on the line. All that toughness and that old evil spirit. Oh, they get humbled real quick. Okay? Just like these Egyptians. Okay? So don't be phased by the tough guy act. When the Most High started putting his heat up, putting the heat on them on your behalf, total change of tone, change of tone. So we have mixed people here, people that's of other nations that are not of the house of Israel. They are just strangers that dwell within the midst of the house of Israel, and we're going to have many of those. As a matter of fact, when we are gathered together, there's going to be some people that are going to be of the house of Israel bloodline. That's going to be what you would call a white person. In appearance, he's going to look like a regular white guy or a regular white woman, but that white guy is going to carry the white chromosome of an Israelite man <clears throat> somewhere down the line. And he's going to stand before us looking like one of our enemies, but he's going to be of our bloodline. And that's why we can't really go too much on this color thing. It's a good barometer, but it's not the absolute and also, there are many men of Israel who look exactly like I look and darker that carry the Y chromosome of Europeans of their enemies. So we're to be mindful when we start looking at our people and start trying to judge them at face value. Some men who look like me are not of the house of Israel at all, at all. Some of them are of, of uh, the sons of Ham and some of them are flat out Europeans that happen to look like me because of the dominant gene of darker complected people you may see that aesthetic but from a genetic standpoint they may carry the Y chromosome of a totally different set of people okay so these are some things that we're to be mindful not to get too caught up in the pigmentation thing because it can fool you and lead you straight uh, so our standard by which we live and by which we treat people and how we deal with them Ought to be the law. And if we do that, we won't misfire. Okay, we won't be incorrect. We deal with them based on how this law states that we deal with them. And if they're walking within this law, regardless of who they are or what they look like, we're to deal righteously with those who deal righteously with us. All right? Okay. All right. Now let's go. Uh, we're at verse 38. Let's reread verse 30. And a mixed multitude went up also with them and flocks and herds, every, even very much cattle. Verse 39. And they baked on leaven cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt, for it was not leavened, because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not carry. Neither had they provided for themselves any victuals. Didn't have any food. Okay? So therefore, we were kicked out so quickly that the dough that we had in the kneading troughs didn't have the time to rise. And that's how we were eating unleavened bread because we were kicked out in a in a hurry. 
we had to leave Egypt in haste. Verse 40. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the selfsame day, it came to pass that all the host of Yah went out from the land of Egypt. All the host of Yah, all the children of Israel, all the sons of Jacob, all the sons and daughters of the Most High, all the firstborn of the Most High left Egypt. All right. Now, when we left Egypt, we were a young nation, 600 and some thousand, young nation. Went there younger than that, 70 souls. Left their seed multiplied, 600 and something thousand. So, when we left on this self same day, after 330 years, that is when the Most High called his son out of Egypt. Once again, when we left there, that is when the Most High called his son out of Egypt. All right? So you remember that. Verse 42. It is a night to be much observed unto Yah for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. This is that night of Yah to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. So we are to observe the Passover because on this night the Most High brought his son out of Egypt. Verse 43. And Yah said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. Once again, this is just to reiterate to anyone that thinks we're all Israel. Everybody is Israel. You're Israel based on what you believe and all this other foolishness. You're Israelite by blood and by blood only. It's not by belief. You are not related to any man by what you believe at all. Your ideology does not make you kin to anyone. And that should make sense to anyone with a functioning brain. Okay? What you think and feel don't make you blood related to any any person. Okay? It's silly. It doesn't make any sense. So the most high states clear the ordinance of this Passover that no stranger shall eat thereof. But every manservant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. So, if a man of Israel had bought a servant, all right, bought him with money, and that servant is circumcised, then that servant may eat of the Passover. You are not to eat of the Passover. Can't eat of the Passover if your phallus is uncircumcised. If you're looking like an elephant that can pick up some twigs off the ground, if your phallus looks like that, you cannot eat this Passover. You are to be circumcised. Okay? So let that be clear to everyone and to anyone. Okay? So when we get back into the land, like I've said before, you know, when we return back to the land from the days of old, they had to recircumcise some Israelites. And Many of our Latin American Israelites right now, males, circumcision is not the thing that they do in those areas. So some of our brothers are going to have to get sliced up and diced up one time, okay, uh, to get them in line, to get them following the righteous order. Because some of our males older today in America and other places and other lands, that they may not be circumcised. And if we return back onto the line of to the land in order for you to keep Passover, you must be circumcised. So that's a procedure that has to be done uh, in, the, in the time to come. Okay? All right. Verse 45. A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. A foreigner is pretty much a stranger. Okay? In one house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house. Neither shall ye break a bone thereof. So when we're eating the Passover, we're not to take the junk to Uncle Johnny across the street. Well, I, I ate a lamb over in my house. I'm going to take that leg over there or a piece of that lamb over to Uncle Johnny across the street or down the street. 
okay? It is to be eaten in the house in which it was cooked. It is not to leave that house. Anything left over shall be burnt. It is not to be carried out of the house in which it was cooked. And no bones of the Passover is to be broken at all. Verse 47. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. That's everyone. Everyone that's born Israelite by blood, you are to keep this Passover. You are to commemorate it. You are to observe it. You are to memorialize it. Verse 48. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee and will keep the Passover to Yah, let all his males be circumcised. And then let him come there and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born in the land. For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. Once again, if your phallus is looking like an elephant trunk and you can pick up some twigs off the ground or an apple or something crazy like that, you cannot eat of this Passover. It is a no-go. You are to be circumcised. And if a stranger that sojourns with the house of Israel and he wants to keep the Passover, him and the males with him have to be circumcised. No uncircumcised person, Israelite or non-Israelite, is allowed to keep this. This is the strict ordinance pertaining to the Passover. Verse 49. One law shall be to him that is home born. That's the Israelite. And unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. One law. There was a time on the earth where we spoke one language. We called on the Most High with one name. You understand? One language, one name, and we all adhered to one law. When we return back to the way things were at the first, all of those things will be reinstated. We will call upon the Most High, one name, one consent. We will all be in observance to one law throughout the whole earth. And that's how it's going to be. All right. So one law. And that same law is going to be observed in your house and out the street. And no matter what country you go to, no matter where you sojourn, the same law from your homeland to the land that you visit is going to be in full effect. And that's the Most High's law, statute, judgment, and precepts. And whether the man be of Israel or whether the man be of a stranger, same law. One law for the whole entire earth. And that is the government of the Most High. Verse 50. Thou thus did all the children of Israel, as Yah commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass the self same day that Yah did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. So the Most High brought us out of Egypt by our armies. What does that mean? By our families. By our families. Now, let me flip to. One second, let me find what I'm looking for, right? One second. All right, found what I was looking for. Here's something that I want you to consider as it pertains to this. JC died for you, rose up in three days, and all this other stuff. We just raised, we just read clearly what Passover is about. We just covered the Passover, the entire chapter of Exodus chapter 12. Now, let's turn to Hosea chapter 6. We were told that this son of God that these Europeans and these Romans made up, that he died and was raised up in the third day. Now, we just covered Exodus chapter 12. So now you clearly know they stole and plagiarized what took place in Egypt and put JC in the mix and came up with what they call Easter. Now let's go to the book of Hosea and we can show you where they plagiarized this whole three-day resurrection thing. Hosea chapter 6 verse 1. Come. And let us return unto Yah. We return unto him by following his law, statutes, judgments, and precepts. His law is the extension of his mercy. 
for he has torn. He done beat us over the head, scattered, scattered us into these many nations, sent evil after us and killed us and is still doing it. For he has torn and he will heal us. He is the one that brought us into the lands of our enemies. He is the one that kicked us out of the Holy Land. He is the one that's bringing all these judgments upon us. And he is the only one that can heal and deliver us. So come and let us return unto Yah, for he has torn and he will heal us, of course. He has smitten, he has busted us over the head. And he will bind us up. He is going to be, he is going to be the one that's going to heal us. After two days, that's 2,000 years. A day with the most highs is 1,000 years. So after two days, he will revive us. So two days has passed. 2,000 years has passed. What you're hearing right now and what you're part of, you're part of the reviving, the waking up. Ezekiel chapter 37. You're part of the waking up, coming out of the dust. You're part of the waking up of the children of Israel, the returning back onto these laws. So verse 2 of Hosea chapter 6 read, reads, After two days will he revive us. He started waking us up after two days. And in the third day, in the third 1,000 years, he will raise us up. Who is us? Us is the entire nation of Israel. His sons and his daughters. His son and his firstborn. Israel. And we will live in his sight. So in the third day, we're going to raise up. That's the resurrection of the children of Israel and all the many lands of their captivity. In that third 1,000 years, we're going to rise up. And when that, what that means, rise up. You can't rise up unless you're down at the bottom. Which means we're going to rise up and take our rightful place above all these nations. Because we are to be above them. So says the Most High, we're special unto Him, period. And we are to be the leaders of this earth, the righteous leaders of this earth. And we will not attain that position or regain that position walking in on righteousness. So this whole resurrection raised up in three days thing. So we just discussed that J.C. is Melchizedek. J.C. is Joshua, the son of Nun. J.C. is the Lamb. J.C. is the Egyptian that died for your behalf. Now J.C. is Israel right now. Because this verse speaks to the waking up of the children of Israel. So now they try to stick J.C. in that too. So they're trying everywhere to fit this idol. And we can go into this Torah. We can go into the law, statute, judgments, and praise to the Most High and just destroy those lies. It's not hard to do. Okay? So once again, verse 2 of Hosea, chapter 6, after two days will he revive us. He begins to awaken us. He begins to bring us to remembrance. In the third day, we're going to raise up the resurre resurrection of the children of Israel in the many lands of their captivity. We're going to stop playing stupid. We're going to stop serving their idols. We're going to stop doing all the things that's contrary to the Most High's law. And we shall live in his sight. The only way you're going to live in the most high sight is when you do that which is right in his sight. And that means you're going to be walking in righteousness. So we've just discussed that. Now, let's jump to Hosea chapter 11. All right. Hosea chapter 11. And we will read verse 1. And that's it. When Israel was a child, a young nation. Then I loved him. I loved him. You will not read where the Most High said he loved anyone else but the house of Israel. You'll never read where he said he loved the Egyptians, the Romans, the Greeks, or anybody else. The Syrians, the Assyrians, the Philistines, the Moabites. You'll never read that. All you will read is where the Most High said he loved Israel. You ain't going to have to read that anyplace else. So once again, Hosea chapter 11, verse 1, when Israel was a child, a young nation, then I loved him and called my son, who is Israel, 
out of Egypt. I'm going to read that. I'm going to reread that one more time. When Israel, my son, was a child, then I loved him, Israel, and called my son Israel out of Egypt. Okay. We just read all of Exodus chapter 12. So we understand clearly how and when he called his son out of Egypt. We went to Exodus chapter 4, which was a prelude to Exodus chapter 12 of what the Most High was going to do on the behalf of his son Israel. So, you are now clear on exactly what Passover is. You should understand clearly how to explain Passover to your children and to your child if you have one, that they may learn it early and that they may learn to commemorate it. Now, I told you exactly what I do on Passover. In my house, we don't eat any lamb, and I laid out specifically why we don't do that. Now, if you do something different, that's fine. And I always say this, we will not all see eye to eye until the Most High brings again Zion. So there's going to be some similarities. There's going to be some differences. As long as we're walking in this law, all that we need to know will be made straight for us. The crooked things will be made straight and we will understand exactly which way to go because the Most High will reveal himself to his people. So until that is done, and the Most High brings again Zion, there's going to be some differences, but those differences doesn't necessarily have to bring about contention. All right? So there we have just covered the Passover 2020. You understand exactly why it was done. You understand exactly how it was done. You also understand clearly how it was plagiarized and switched into something entirely new. And keep in mind, we were warned by Moshe that we would take a hold of new things. Started worshiping these idols, these devils, newly raised up, that our forefathers never knew about. And that's this Christianity. That's this Roman Catholicism. All the same thing as all wickedness. And it's going to be removed from the earth. There is no way, no how that it won't be. Because from the inception of this thing, there has been no peace on the earth. And the most highest way, his law, statutes, judgments, and precepts ushers in peace. We have been in Christianity for a few thousand years. And there has been no peace in the earth among the nations or among the, among the people of the nations. And that is why in the latter days, when the most high has finished purging these nations and killing them off, that the ones that are remain. The ones that are left to live, they're all going to have to say, come and let us go up to the strong one of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that he may teach us of his ways, his laws, and that we may walk in his path of righteousness. They're all going to have to go up to that one temple and make that admission and ask to be taught his law. And when those nations come and ask to be taught of his law, guess who's going to be teaching it? You, man of Israel. And that is why you must be on your game. You must live it and you must do it. And if you're living it and doing it, then you will have no problem teaching it. It will come to you naturally. So that covers Passover 2020. We're well aware now exactly where these lies came from. No one has ever died for you. You should know that if you've been at this channel for any length of time. There's no such thing called Easter. There's no such thing called Easter Sunday. There's no such thing called Good Friday. And no one ever died and resurrected themselves on a cross for you. Never happened. The Egyptians were ransomed on your behalf. And because you are the firstborn of the Most High, and because we are his sons and daughters, is exactly why Passover took place. Make sure that you get all 11 out of your houses. We have a few days until Passover. Get ready. Make sure that you read every day. This law. I don't care if you read a paragraph a day or a page a day, but get it to where in your life, every day you read this book. Read something out of this book. I've told you in times past, read from start 
Genesis to Malachi. When you're done, do it all over again. So be involved in reading every single day. It really does help reinforce uh, this whole word. It keeps you anchored because there are so many things around us that can distract us or pull us away. And the wicked man is constantly trying to set traps at the feet of the righteous. So you have to stay grounded. And there's no better way to do that than to be in this law by means of reading it and doing it. And if the Most High has put his spirit upon you, then you teach it. Peace, Israel, and Yah bless. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. I hope you're having a blessed Sabbath on this day, Israel. Peace, Israel. And that also goes out to the stranger that is of a contrite spirit. I know I address Israel all the time, and I am to address Israel first, because should they not be shown their errors, and they not be caused to turn back onto this word, then we will remain to be the mess to, we will remain in the mess that we're in because this is the house of Israel that has to take the lead and teach the people of the earth the most high's righteousness. We are to bring forth his light. That is his law. That is our job. So I am to reach the men of Israel first because nothing gets done unless they start moving. And once that happens and they start teaching and doing this word, then they will be able to spread this word, this light to the Gentiles. So that is why I always address the house of Israel, the men of Israel first. But the stranger, you are not to be forgotten. You have a place in Israel. You will have your own dwelling in the midst of us in the land for those of you who are a contrite spirit. So when you hear me address Israel, I come on and say, peace, Israel. You, the stranger, you are not to be forgotten. And I know there's some of you at this channel, even though you may not say anything. OK, but either way, I want you to continue to stay strong in this word. Look at what's going on around you and understand that your only hope of peace and your only hope of salvation and your only hope of protection is to put on the breastplate of righteousness and to walk within the most high's law, statutes, judgments, and precepts. No vaccine is going to help you. No quarantine is going to help you. No government is going to help you because the most high is going to strip them. You're seeing it before your very face right now. And you're going to see the chaos and you're going to see the bodies. And it's going to get worse. Anyway, Israel, I will leave you with that. I hope you all are having a blessed Sabbath day and you're in this word. And you continue to do the things that are right in the sight of the Most High. That you may be afforded his protection. Peace, Israel, and Yah bless. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and thy law is the truth. Peace, Israel.